Good morning. Today we're talking uh, about the most fine, famous highway in the world and how the bicycle contributed greatly to that development of that highway. A little bit of tidbits for you. Route 66 is the most recorded song in history. There are currently Route 66 associations in Germany, the Netherlands, Czech Republic, Belgium, France, Brazil, Japan, Australia. There are companies that specialize in Route 66 tours operating in numerous countries throughout Europe, New Zealand, Australia. Recently, studies have shown that the Route 66 shield is perhaps more popular than the Coca-Cola symbol. And it all began with the bicycle. In the beginning, the dawn of a new era, By the early uh, 1890 period, bicycling was just beginning to catch on. But we already, saw, already had the ghost of Christmas future. Ransom E. Olds was giving interviews to Scientific American, talking about the, the future, the possible advantages of a uh, gasoline-powered buggy over the horse, how it never tires on long runs. And it was against that backdrop that we had the bicycle industry coming of age. In 1890, we had 27 bicycle manufacturers producing roughly 40,000 bicycles. By 1896, the League of American Wheelmen, a lobbying organization for the bicyclist, estimated that there were over 2,500,000 bicycle riders in the United States. By 1896, there were over 250 bicycle manufacturers, 30,000 bicycle dealers. It was an explosion of bicycle touring. And it's amazing some of the things these people were doing with these early bicycles. Long distance travels, St. Louis, uh, Kalamazoo to St. Louis, Detroit to New York City. And this created an infrastructure for the tourism movement. The League of Wheel American Wheelmen began petitioning for better roads. And this was the dawning of the good roads movement that would pave the way for the rise of the automobile and eventually the U.S. highway system. And so the wheelmen are trying to encourage the movement for better roads, not only because good roads are needed for bicycle riding, but because they are needed by everybody. It was published in Godey's Magazine, 1896. The League of American Wheelmen became a very powerful organization in the lobbying for good roads and for the, the development of um, roads outside of urban areas. And this gave rise to a number of fascinating little in, uh, industries. Orville and Wilbur Wright established a bicycle manufacturing company. Ch Charles and Frank Durier demonstrated their motor wagon the Duryea brothers were the first to offer automobiles and produce them for sale. Uh, to give you an idea on how grueling it was to drive automobiles at that time, the first automobile race in 1895, one of the participants dropped out from exhaustion, and he was a blacksmith. And as you can see, it began to evolve rather quickly. The Winton Bicycle Company became another pioneer in the automotive industry. And just as bicycle tourism 
had spawned interest in road trips, the automobile gave new rise to this. Touring in itself is a pastime of which one may never tire. I wonder how much alcohol played a role in some of these things. And the love affair begins. Dr. Jackson set out from San Francisco, and this was a uh, uh, just on a $50 bet. He arrived in July 26, and it was a grueling adventure that, uh, well, it was an epic odyssey. And then, of course, Alexander Winton of Winton uh, Motor Carriage Company made his effort, but he only made it as far as the east side of the Sierras before he quit the endeavor. To give you an idea, and after the dawning of the 20th century, the automotive industry became the new gold rush. Most every community in America was producing automobiles of one kind or another. Even Enid, Oklahoma had an automobile manufacturer. St. Louis had over a hundred companies between 1900 and roughly 1930. Jackson, Michigan, 24 manufacturers. Louisville, Kentucky, 13 manufacturers. Portland, Oregon, four manufacturers. A little bit of a snapshot about the auto industry is comes from to us from Jackson, Michigan, and the Jackson Automobile Company. They may have started out with two, two different kinds of cars. J-A-X-O-N was the steam-powered car, and then the J-A-C-K-S-O-N was the gasoline-powered car. And you can see here, they established them, started with bicycles, as many of the companies did, and evolved into gasoline automobiles. They also tried a steamer. As I mentioned, uh, they did truck manufacturing, automobile production, and filed for bankruptcy in 1924. For us old-timers, we remember slogans like See the USA in your Chevrolet that Dinah Shore talked about. But in the infancy of the American auto industry, there were numerous slogans that mirrored the times and what was important to people. And of course, there were some slogans that leave you just going, What? A common-sense car with no tender or delicate parts. Gearless. Nothing to watch but the road. No clutch to slip, no gears to strip. Perfectly simple, simply perfect, Maxwell. The king of the hill climbers was the Allen. It was a time of dramatic societal evolution. Things were changing. On April 20th, 1909, construction of the world's first mile of concrete highway was begun in Detroit. The first electric traffic signal was installed on the corner of Euclid Avenue and East 105th Street in Cleveland, Ohio. Arthur Hale, a civil engineer in Maryland, patents a cloverleaf interchange. The first tricolor traffic light was installed at Woodward Avenue and Fort Street in Detroit, Michigan. The first motel inn in San Luis Obispo, California opens, and the American lexicon was forever changed. It was a society in dramatic transition, very much like what we've been dealing with in the last 20 years, closing years of the 20th century and dawning years of the 21st century. Look at the differences. In 1909, 828,000 horse-drawn vehicles manufactured, and less than half of those, that number, was automobile production. But by 1929, the horse-drawn vehicle was relegated to an artifact with only 4,000 vehicles being manufactured. More people owned an automobile than had indoor plumbing in 1920. And we had a lot of trouble. We talk about this today, how difficult it is to uh, keep up with changing times, especially uh, as, as we get older. Well, look at Mr. Ezra Meeker and the way he adapted and the things he saw. He made his first trip west over the Oregon Trail in 1852. In 1919, he was assisting his son in the construction of a service station at the Cajon Pass. In 1915, he'd been traveling the United States by automobile. In 1910, he used his ox cart and participated in the Rose Bowl Parade. Pretty astounding when you think about the changes this man saw. And by the way, uh, he lived until 1928. Quite an astounding accomplishment. A.L. Westgart was a Norwegian immigrant. 
and his exploits became quite legendary. He mapped many, many of the uh, early automotive roads. He uh, was instrumental in establishment of the Lincoln Highway. Interestingly enough, the Trail to Sunset began at the intersection in Chicago where Route 66 would later start. And it would become the National Old Trails Road from Chicago to Yuma until 1913 when it was rerouted across northern Arizona. At one point, he was covering something like 20,000 miles in a season mapping roads. To give you an idea how astounding that was, in 1915, Edsel Ford wrote in his journal how nice it was. He had a great day's travel from uh, Williams, Arizona to Kingman, Arizona. He covered 153 miles and arrived at midnight. Fueling the interest in automotive adventures were endurance races and uh, cross-country events. The Desert Classic launched in 1908, and it was dubbed the Cactus Derby. And it was a major event every year following a different course from Los Angeles to Phoenix. The event proved very popular, and the last race, 1914, followed the National Old Trails Road and featured some pretty famous racers, including Barney Oldfield and Louis Chevrolet. The Lincoln Highway has never had the press and publicity that Route 66 has, but it still has a following dedicated enthusiast. And Lincoln Highway is interesting and historic because it was our first highway. Hello? Yes. Yes, how are you? Oh, 